All right, in this video, we're going to look at expressions and then we're going to compare them to equations. These are two uh, words in algebra that students oftentimes get them mixed up. They do the wrong operations with expressions or they, or they do the wrong operations with equations. So I want to stress the importance of how to simplify expressions. Notice I said simplify expressions versus how you can solve equations. Um, you simplify expressions, you solve equations. Well, what is an expression? An expression is something like what you see here in these three examples. Um, simplifying expressions really means combine like terms. So let's just throw a one in front of that X because that's one X right there. And all you're really doing is doing a little bit of basic arithmetic. You're taking seven minus one. And the reason why we do that is because these are like terms. They both have an X in it. So seven minus one is six and we just don't forget our X right there. That's all we do. Now, this right here might not seem too crazy, but if you're first getting into algebra, people make this mistake in an example like this one. This is a mistake. Don't do it. I want to go ahead and stress to you what a lot of people do, and they do this incorrectly. Um, they say, okay, well, I got a 38x, and it's a negative 38x, and I got a 10x. Well, you want to combine them, and this is not how you do it. This, what you're doing when you do this, you're getting an expression confused with an equation. An equation is going to have an equals in it, and I have not even showed you any, an equation yet. Well, you may say, hey, you got an equals right there. I'm just showing what this is equal to when I simplified it. But in an original problem, such as what you see here, we don't have an equals. All we want to do is combine like terms. So when we combine like terms, we got a 10x and we got a minus 38x. Just like we took seven minus one and we said six, we're gonna take 10 minus 38. It's okay if they're not right beside each other, totally fine. Uh, combine those together, we get negative 28x. And then looking at this 36 minus 47. Uh, so what do we have there? We combine them. We do not do this. Do not do this. I want to stress that to you. Do not add that 47 to move it over here. No, that is not correct. So all we want to do here is take 36 minus 47. That gives us negative 11. And that's it for that expression. Oftentimes as well, in expressions, you can have some distributive property to take care of, such as getting rid of parentheses like you see here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this negative 7, multiply it by K. Uh, we can multiply these. There's an understood 1 in front of that K, just like we had an understood 1 in front of this X, or it was a negative 1 here, rather. But uh, still, an understood 1 in front of a variable. Well, we take the negative 7 times that understood 1. We get negative 7K. And then we take negative seven times negative eight. I say positive 56. You got to watch your signs there. Notice I did take a negative times a negative. And then what about this 2K? We do not multiply that over here because this 2K is not in parentheses. So I'm just going to write that down like that. Now from here, we have another expression. This expression is the same thing as this expression. And now we can combine like terms. So we take negative seven plus two. We do not do any inverse operations. Not yet. It's coming up soon. Negative 7 plus 2, that's negative 5. Don't forget your K. Plus 56. So we have simplified these three expressions. Let me throw one more at you to uh, show you some things that I often see as well. Suppose we had 5 plus 2, and then we had 3A minus 5. Now, what I see students make a mistake here with expressions as well is they'll combine these and say 7. And now, sure, 5 plus 2 is 7, but you don't want to add yet. You have to obey the order of operations and multiply first. So when we distribute this 2, we're really multiplying everything inside of here by 2. Let's do that first, then we'll worry about the 5 plus. Now, of course, I can go ahead and write the 5 plus down. Nothing wrong with that, but you don't want to say 7. You want to take this 2 times this 3. That's going to give you 6, but don't forget your A, so 6A. And then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And now we can combine like terms. So 5 plus 6A minus 10, we can take the 5 minus 10. That's negative 5. And then plus 6A. That's your final answer. Now you may say, oh, what about writing the variable first? Totally fine as well. You can rewrite this as keep your 6a as a positive 6a. So we have 6a and that 5 is a negative. So we can say subtract 5. That's the exact same answer. So you can reverse these around as well. Um, for example, you know, this one right here in pink, we could write the 56 first. Notice the 56 has a plus, so I keep it positive. And then we have minus 5k. Yes, you can rearrange your uh, terms in your expression. All right. So that is an expression. Now, what is an equation? What makes an equation different? 
an equation is when you're dealing with uh, uh, equals in between two expressions. So for example, let's just do a basic one. I'm going to take this expression over here, 7x minus x, and I'm going to set it equal to, let's say, uh, 24. Okay. What we have just created is an equation, an equation. Now, this is the problem we have to solve. So key things here. Let me grab my keyboard real quick. Key things to keep in mind. You simplify keywords here. You simplify expressions. Whereas over here, what we're getting ready to do in our problem now is we're getting ready to solve equations. So over here, you solve equations. Two big, two big words, two big differences. Simplifying is just cleaning it up, making it look pretty. Solving is actually finding a variable. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, we want to take 7x minus x equals 24. This is where you do the inverse operation. So for example, here we have uh, combining like terms, just like over here, we simplify this expression. So 7x minus x is 6x. That's all we have left over here. And this is equal to 24. And now we're doing inverse operations. I'm assuming you have had some exposure to equations. Also, what you need to check out as well is over at my website, idomath.weebly.com, underneath DMA, uh, DMA material and DMA 40 material. That is an entire course on nothing but equations, expressions, and also inequalities. So feel free to go have a look at uh, the notes and the videos that I already have posted over there at that website. But now solving this, we divide by six. Because 6 times something gives us 24. Uh, sure, I bet you know that's 4, right? But if you don't know it, you divide to get rid of that 6, and we get x equals 4. So that's our solution to that equation. Now, let's take this expression over here, the 10x, all that stuff. I'm going to throw one more equation at you. Because, again, over at my website, I do have a lot of these um, a lot of equations, videos, notes, and stuff like that, but I want to stress the difference between these two. So we got 10x plus 36 minus 38x minus 47, and heck, let's do this. Let's take this one. I don't know what the heck we're going to get, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's take these two expressions. That's what makes an equation. An equation is when you have an expression equal to another expression. That's exactly what we have right here. So let's combine like terms, just like over here, we did that already. We combined all these terms. That's all these terms on this side, on the left-hand side of the equal. So that's something that can help you out too. When should you be doing this inverse operation junk? You should only be doing inverse operations like division and subtraction and addition when you move it across an equal. Well, right now, all this junk is on the left-hand side. So when we combine all this together, we get negative 28x minus 11, bring down your equals. There is never ever a reason for you to move that equals out of this vertical line right here. Just keep it lined up. Over here on this side, what do we have? 6x, right? We've done that, what, three times now. We are combining like terms. Seven minus one gives you six. Don't forget your x. Now we're getting ready to do some inverse operations. So if we want to move, we got to get the x on one side. You can either move the 6x over here or you can move the 28x or the negative 28x over here. Since we're getting ready to move it across the equal, this is when you do the inverse operation. Up here earlier, and it's important to note this, and it, it, uh, like earlier here, I was saying, do not do this, do not do this. And the reason why is because this was just simplifying. We just combined like terms. We're not moving something across an equal. So I don't need to change my signs over here. Whereas now that we're getting ready to move this x across an equal, yeah, let's change the sign. So let's add 28x to both sides. Now, why are we really doing that is because we're trying to eliminate a variable on one side. Negative 28x plus 28x is 0x, which it just cancels out. Just like negative 50 plus 50 is 0, or 100 minus 100 is 0. Negative 28x plus 28x is 0. It cancels out. Well, what do we have left over here? Negative 11 is equal to, what do we get over here? 34x. All right, and then how do we get the x by itself? Very similar to this, we divided by 6 in this example to get x by itself. Really, because that's the inverse operation of multiplication. Well, what are we doing with x over here? We're multiplying it by 34. And it's okay to have x on the right-hand side. Let's divide by 34 on both sides. 
And what happens here? 34 over 34 is not zero. 34 over 34 is one, is one. Well, one what? We still have an X left. So one X is just X. And hey, it's all right if you get a fraction as an answer. And it turns out this fraction will not simplify. So again, those key points, expressions never do inverse operations. We just combine like terms and we clean it up. We make it look prettier than what we started off with. Whereas equations, you solve equations. This is where you actually get a variable. You figure out what that variable is because you now have an equals in your problem. So simplify expressions, solve equations. There you have it. You know, two different concepts. People get them mixed up and uh, hopefully this did address some of those issues. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.